I'm going to start on the top shelf and figure out which objects want to live up there. I don't really want to put it right in the center, but I don't want it too far off to the side because I don't want to crowd this shelf. One of my best bits of advice is to mix things up, include family heirlooms, include vintage pieces, include art and lighting and books and objects. So this is a vintage piece that actually broke that I have repaired. And I'm thinking these two look really nice. One is lower and bulbous. The other one has some verticality to it. Something to think of when you're pairing objects together is to make sure that there is contrasting or at least a variety of materials. I also love that these shelves are kind of rough hewn and rustic, where this is a walnut piece that has more of a sculptural form. So this has a similar shape as the one on the top. So I most certainly wouldn't want to put it in the same location. I'm thinking that this is going to be like a corner piece, but it's making me realize that this guy perhaps wants to move over a bit. Bottom shelf has the most space, so it could be really nice to put a larger piece of artwork. And I'm just going to lean it. And then I love to style with books, usually neutral books. So I always love to have lower pieces that have a bit of elevation through height with a book. So let's add this book. And then again, this is that lower type of object. So that's why it felt it needed a little bit of height. But again, you're gonna want pieces, some that are higher and more vertical, some that feel lower. You're always gonna to wanna to play with a variety of forms. This is also a vintage piece. So I love that it has some sort of patina to it where many of these pieces are kind of new. It's nice to have something that feels a little imperfect and mucked up. I'm kind of loving that this piece of artwork and this are similar but a different hue and turning one on its side so it's more landscape. And I'm gonna nestle these two together so that there is a bit of an overlap. So they do say when you're styling that design often works in threes. So you'll notice that here I've kind of nestled these three pieces together. Things just work in odd numbers. They call it the golden ratio. So the piece of art feels like it's a standalone piece, but if it was completely on its own, it would feel lonely. So I would say that you know, play around with your objects because certain things like this, for instance, it doesn't really need a friend. It can absolutely hold space because it's such a strong statement of a piece. But all three of these pieces on their own would kind of feel lonely if it didn't have a friend or a buddy. So to me, this is this little vignette is a series. And I'm gonna to wanna to make sure that they all relate to one another. One has height, one is lower. than anything playing with the calibration of things sometimes what you think in your mind's eye might work actually doesn't but if you just start to continuously play swap things out until you feel like you have kind of that right alchemy of pieces it's interesting because initially I thought that this white vessel on its own would be too quiet I think oftentimes when you're styling people always want to fill every void and there's something really beautiful about taking moments that kind of allow a little bit of quiet. Negative space is just as important in design as filling things with objects. Always refresh your spaces. Always have an opportunity to play, to style, to bring the pieces that were in your bedroom into your media room or your kitchen. Sky's the limit on how you can design your space and restyle your space and also just have fun.